بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته One word is repeated in the Holy Quran often which is the word of Hiba usually used as a verb the verb Wahaba is repeated in the Holy Quran many times and in most of them, the vast majority of them, it is speaking about Allah Almighty given as gift children and offspring. We will speak today about the importance of family and how it is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The prophets and messengers, peace be upon them, their main concern was never this dunya. Their main ambition was the hereafter, pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, Allah Almighty related to us many of the dua of the prophets and messengers asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. of the most merciful Allah Almighty and their dua Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina kurrata ayun oh Allah Almighty grant us as a gift from you from our spouses and our offspring and children those who will be a comfort to our eyes and make us a model an imam a leader for an example for the righteous means the way we will establish a good family, good offspring, good entity in the society that is going to be a model. Beautiful dua that is repeated often and often. Most Muslims, alhamdulillah, are repeating this dua. So this hints at the importance of this concept in Islam. And actually the family is the centerpiece of any society, any good society ever. Who is going to give? Human beings need lots and lots of care probably more than any other creature on earth. From the moment a human being comes to this world, till he is able to win his own bread, you need years and years. Lots of care. And the biggest challenge with a human being is that you need to concentrate not only on the growth of the body, but you need also to educate him and teach him. We human being. We come with nothing. There are many creatures that hatch from their eggs or from the wombs of their mothers. They are born and they can win their own sustenance immediately. They can live without a parent on the spot. And Allah Almighty already programmed them of what to do and how to do and how to program, how to do everything. For us, we need to learn. We need to be educated, brought up. And this needs lots and lots of effort as well. So that is why a family is extremely important. Without a family, it is extremely difficult for a human being to live or sustain him, himself for such a certain time and then to develop and then to be a productive member in the society. And even those who lose their parents one way or the other due to a caster or otherwise, usually they need a fostering home or a fostering house or a fostering family to care with. That is how it works. And that is why the importance of this. It's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have a family. It's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are living within an enclosure. Place, somebody to care for you. The moment you came to this world until you became an independent person. And then there is the other aspect. The other aspect of what is your duty towards that. So the moment you grow up, somebody cares for you, now you have to establish your own family. Isn't it? It's the natural progress. You have to do your part. And the first thing you need is you need a spouse. You need a mate, you need a partner with you in this journey. And that is why having a righteous and a good spouse is one of the biggest gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a human being. 
Some people are smiling, they are agreeing with that. Other people are saying, ah, what? <laughs> because they are having problems probably back home. <laughs> so this is the biggest problem that I have in my life. No, it's not. Even if there are challenges, in fact, being in that, and you, you can never appreciate it enough until you lose it. We do have examples. There are, of course, some failed examples, for sure. That's part of human life. But in real life, our problem is that we are not appreciating what we already have. We don't. If somebody is doing you a favor nowadays, you, will, you are very eager to say thank you, to thank him for that. No matter how little it might be, isn't it? You are about to cross the road, somebody stops for you, we thank you. You sure? If you're a good person, you'll do that, right? But your wife or your husband who is doing lots and lots of things on a daily basis, most of the time, when was the last time you said thank to them? Ah, uh, okay, so we have a problem. We do. This is a big issue. Now, there was a story during the time of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Almighty revealed one verse in the beginning of Islam. This was before the obligation of zakah. Muslims were encouraged to share whatever they have. And in fact, they thought that they cannot actually keep anything for themselves. Anything extra, you have to share it with those who need. So the zakah became a relaxation, not an obligation. Before the zakah, they thought they have to give up everything. Whatever extra you have, you have to share it to somebody who does not have. The zakah became a relaxation. So Allah Almighty at that time revealed, and those who withhold or gather silver and gold, gold and silver, and they do not spend it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then give them the glad tiding of a punishment, get forbid. Painful punishment. Glad tiding of a punishment. This is not going to be something good for you in the long run. So when this was revealed, they say to themselves, had Allah Almighty told us what type of money we should hoard, we should collect, we should keep? Which, which money is good? Okay, gold is not good, silver is not good, fine. What is good? Nothing, the eye not, does not speak about anything. So they say, had Allah Almighty told us, what is it? So this was related to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And among the Sahaba who said that was Mu'adh radiallahu anhu. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed him and the other address. There are many narrators of this hadith, same hadith. Abu Umam radiallahu anhu, Ali radiallahu anhu, and Thawban radiallahu anhu, and including Mu'adh, the story in the name. So he said, oh Mu'adh, the best treasure for a person, a believer, is to have a heart that is thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A tongue that is remembering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a righteous wife who will support him for his worldly affair and religious affairs. This is the best treasure. So if you could see, the first two, that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hard tongue, that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But among people, the Messenger of Allah mentioned only a partner, a mate, who is righteous, who is going to support you with your ambitions, your goals, your objectives, whatever you are trying to achieve, worldly or religiously. And truly, that is a treasure. If you go through your whole life, check anyone who has succeeded one way or the other, if he has a family, it is usually the wife who has taken most of the burdens of the family away from him so that he will be able to concentrate. You cannot, cannot do everything by yourself. They have to share. You understand that? That is why the Messenger وسلم, mentioned this. Now if we have established this reality, how do you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this? Thanking the wives? Uh, that is a problem. Most people are not going to do it. You should actually. And you should thank her in front of the children so that they will learn. If our father is appreciating the efforts, the daily ones, so they will get used to the idea. They will start appreciating that themselves. One of the biggest issues with our kids nowadays is that they do not appreciate the efforts of the parents. They do not realize it. The moment they are in this world, they haven't seen any hardship, any difficulties. They're not used to any of that. 
Everything is taken granted. And that is a problem. They need to, to understand, they need to appreciate so that they will value it and then they will themselves, they will become good members in the society. That is why Umar bin Abdul Aziz radiallahu anhu, he says the piety is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person to be pious, that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But will manners, manners, education, behaviors, that is from the parents. You have to educate him. Whether he's going to be righteous in the sight of Allah or something, that is not in your hand. You can only guide him. You can only pray for him. But your duty is to educate him. Make him a good man, a gentleman. Make her a noble woman. That is the duty. After that, the guidance for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So part of that is to thank. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then thank people who are doing this effort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summarized this concept. Live with them with kindness and on good ground or with goodness. Kindness and goodness. Live with them, with the wives. The second one is be gentle with them. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if Allah Almighty wanted any goodness for any family, He will instill among them gentleness. There will always be issues, misunderstandings, conflicts and so on. This is part of life. However, how do you deal with it? How do you discuss it? In a gentle manner. In a gentle way. That is why the Messenger ﷺ mentioned this. The third one is support them with both their in-house duties or activities and their ambitions or outside or whatever they are planning in their life. They are your partners. And that is why if we go through the life of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when it was asked what did he used to do when he came back home? And he's the most busy person on earth, the most successful human being ever on the worldly matters and in the religious matters. None compare with the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his duties in such a short span of time. And he didn't have only one wife to worry about. Had lots. When he gets back home, they say they will be in the service of his family, subhanAllah. Helping with the house chores. Whatever he's able to participate. Nowadays, alhamdulillah, mashallah, some men are living like kings. Get back home, relax on a couch, ask for whatever he likes, flicking through the TVs and so on, whatever he might do. King. Everything is done by the other partner. Thank you very much. Now, if there is a thank you, this is also good. Sometimes no thank you also. Ah, this is a problem. The, the sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, is he never ever asked for or usually not even accepted any help from anyone regarding something that concerns him if he could do it himself. Then, he needed water, he'll go and get it himself. He needs something, go and get it himself. Anything he could do. Fix his shoes, he will do it himself. Need to drink a little milk, he'll go and milk the goat himself, or the sheep himself, everything. That is the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu They are your partners, not your employees. You are in charge, yes, but you are not their employers. You are the team leader, okay? Team leader is supposed to be the role, example, huh? the model for them in the efforts and work. Children, of course, and uh, uh, the son of the Messenger of Allah, as he said, خيركم خيركم The best among you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who are best to their families. And I am the best to my family. So I'm trying my best, the Messenger of Allah, because he's the best in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Understanding the importance of this. Children are also one of the biggest gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you have stated, even the prophets and messengers were praying. Why did they pray for the children? Not so that, okay, whenever I'm sitting, mashallah, I have four, five, ten children around me. All of them are my children. No. I want them so that they will be righteous people who will guide humanity after them. That is the dua. This is the literal dua. And that is why in these dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala related, the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ishaq and Ismail alayhi salam, both of them are prophets. The son of Ishaq, Yaqub alayhi salam, also a prophet. The son of Yaqub alayhi salam, Yusuf alayhi salam, also a prophet. You get the idea? It's the idea so that they will carry this knowledge and guide us to humanity. So their main concern was 
Allah Almighty, this, when I die, I don't want this to stop. This goodness in this world does not stop. Zakariya alayhi salam, Yahya alayhi salam is also a prophet and so on. The wife of Imran, she is praying, she got Maryam alayhi salam, a saint. And then the Maryam alayhi salam, she got Jesus, peace be upon Isa alayhi salam, prophet and messenger. So when Allah Almighty is mentioning their prayers for their offspring for a good reason, children are a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't appreciate that, you are not thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. One of the biggest gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anyone who has grown up. Just check around you, anyone who is deprived from this blessing. They are ready to spend everything in this world to get a child. Everything, literally. I know of a person, alhamdulillah, extremely wealthy. But subhanallah, after 18 years of marriage and still no child. Spent lots and lots of money and efforts. Growing older every day from the anxiety. Just wanting someone to carry his name after him. Alhamdulillah, after this 18 years, Allah Almighty blessed him with a child. So he became the happiest person on earth. SubhanAllah. We, Alhamdulillah, many people are having children and so on, and they are fed up with them. <laughs> what is going on? They are, because, they, because you are not appreciating it. Does it come with challenges? For sure. This is the duty of a child. The, the role of a child is simply to get on your, on your nerve. That's the idea. The idea, the child, it is his instinct to try to investigate and explore. That is how he is created. And you should not stop it. You should guide it only. This is something very important for his growth. That's how we were. We're, we were actually, I think, I think we were much naughtier than our children nowadays. Truly, the only difference is that we used to do it outside the house. Now because they are con constrained within four walls, that is why you see the problem. It's not going out outside. It's to leave, play outside and jump and climb and do whatever you like. For hours and hours. And then get back home, of course, you are already exhausted and tired. So, so you seem like, alhamdulillah, mashallah, calm. So you need to put up with them. You have to be patient with them. You have to guide all these activities, these energies to a good use. Alhamdulillah. Part of what you do to your du'as, first thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what you have. As Allah Almighty taught us from the du'a of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Alhamdulillahi alladhi wahab li al kibari Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq. Thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting me. When I am at an old age, granted me Ismail and Ishaq. Peace be upon them. Pray for them, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us from the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam also. Praying that his offspring should perform the salah and be righteous people. Pray for them. This is something very important, especially when they upset you the most. When you are fed up with them, when you are extremely angry with them. When you cannot take it any longer, at that moment, never pray against them. Pray for them. Always pray for them. It's a common mistake that sometimes when they get on your nerve, you start cursing or, or, or praying against them, God forbid, or saying bad things. This is very bad. And it could, it could be at a moment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is accepting the dua, God forbid. What are you going to do? So now you pray for him, he will benefit from your prayer, you will benefit from him being a good son to you. You pray against him, he will be harmed by your dua, and you will be harmed because he is not a good son to you. What is it? So this is a win-win situation, this is a lose-lose situation. What should you choose? I'm seeing some of the children are saying, ah, okay, so I'm going. I think next week, some of the children will not be here. <laughs> if they were laid this to their parents. No, don't worry, don't get on their nerves, okay? You as a child, you have to be calm, you try to be obedient to them, do your activities outside so that you will not upset them, inshallah, okay? Uh, part of the duty is to educate them. We spend lots and lots of efforts and expenses for the body growth. This is what we do to our children, truly. Try to feed them the best, feed them the best, and clothe them with the best, whatever you could afford. But what about their education? Sadly, many of us are lacking in this regard. We have two different type of people. There are those who concentrate mostly on the worldly educations only. So their main concern is, he wants them to be, there is a stereotype, especially about most Asians, huh? engineer or doctor, not their choice. 
You cannot. You don't have that choice. Either. <laughs> Only choice A or B. Which is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. But what about him as a, a, a human being? As a Muslim, as a believer, as a spiritual person, what is that? where is that education? When is he going to get it if he does not get it now? Because, especially if you want him to be an engineer or a doctor, he's going to be extremely busy with his study. No time for anything extra, isn't it? So, you have to start at a young age. That is why the guidance from the Messenger Muhammad Wasallam, living with them lovingly and caringly and so on, until the age of five, uh, seven, you start with the orders and guidance. Only again, just gently and just by speech. And you continue that until the age of ten. And then from that you need to be stricter. More strict with them when doing right or wrong. And you continue to do that until they become an adult at the age of 15 or so. And that's it. After that, he is a man now, or a woman, an adult. Now the whole attitude has to change. You can only advise now. Your guardianship was then. Your ability, what was granted to you was before. The responsibility does not stop. However, now he is a man or a woman. None. And we have the exact opposite. I, I see some of the cases and the complaints that I receive. It is the opposite. When he's a child, he's left doing whatever he like, missing as much as he like. When he becomes an adult, now they, they want to sit him straight now. And sometimes the punishment starts or the admonishing and the, the strictness. It is way too late. Way too late. The best you can do is pray for them, which is the next point. Continue to pray for them as much as you can. The dua of a parent to their children is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to concentrate on that. Final point is the uh, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters are one of the greatest gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a human being. And uh, we, we might not realize that. The first time this came to my mind, is uh, we had in the university some of the brothers from China. And one of my friends, the Chinese friend, he was telling me, he says, uh, we are missing lots of concepts that you are talking about. We don't understand it. Because at that time they have a very strict role. I think it's still in, in effect or to, some, to someone. Each family can have only one single child. So if he's a boy, he does not understand the concept of a sibling, neither a brother nor a sister. He does not understand it. He never experienced this in his, in his life. Doesn't stop here. The parents is the same. So he does not have an ankle from the father's side. And he does not have an aunt from both sides and so on. Lots of these relations are missing in his life. And he says, now when you are talking about it, I feel extremely jealous. There's something way too beautiful. To miss. What is going on? Why are we missing all of that? That's because we are not realizing it. We are not realizing it. So if you, if you know a family with an only child and he is growing up and he can express himself, if you speak to him about being alone and mashallah you alone, he might start crying and he wish to have a brother or a sister. Someone with him. And the brother and the sister is one of the biggest support for their brothers and sisters. We have a beautiful example mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran, the story of Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam, when Allah Almighty entrusted him with the huge responsibility, major responsibility of going to Fir'aun, the biggest tyrant on earth ever, who claims to be God and the biggest among any other God in case there is another God. That was his claim. And he claimed all people, his slaves, everything and everything they own. Can you imagine going to that person and tell him, you are a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all these people are equal to you. That was the duty of Musa alayhi salam. So Musa alayhi salam feared for himself, literally. Feared, there, there is already a, a history between him and Pharaoh before. No time to elaborate, but the idea he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a brother. Send my brother with me. Okay, fine, I'm going to do it. This is the duty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have to do it. But send as my supporter, my, my partner. Send Harun alayhi salam, my brother. I want him to be with me. That is why, interestingly, they say the biggest favor a brother did to his brother 
was the favor of Musa alayhi salam to Harun alayhi salam. Because he was made a prophet by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply because Musa alayhi salam wanted him. So Allah Almighty sent Harun alayhi salam as a prophet as well. To support him, and that is why he went with him. Uh, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, to grant us uh, good and righteous uh, families and, and, and children and uh, offspring that will carry our name after us and that will pray for us later on, that we will get reward from them, inshallah, in the long run. I mean.